Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee LaValle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about the biology of risk taking and the idea that some of us might be born with a desire to seek new experiences with a desire for adventure, novelty, and innovation. And other people lean naturally toward a desire for safety, security, and are most comfortable when they know what to expect. I saw this very clearly with the children at preschool. They were kids we were always pulling off the top of the play structure, and the ones who were afraid to walk down the stairs. I was an art teacher for a long time, and there were children who just loved it when I would throw out a bunch of materials and say, make whatever you want. And the other half of the class that would look at me like deer in the headlights, because they did best with clear instruction. Now, I personally am a color outside the lines, jump off the bridge, risk-taking kind of person. And there are many ways that has served me, and more than a few ways that it hasn't. <laughs> Jumping off those bridges kind of hurts when you forget to put your parachute on. And it's been really beneficial for me over time to develop the skills of that other side of stability, security, responsibility, and routine. I was working with a client this week, a woman in her 60s, who took her family responsibilities very seriously. She's a first-generation American immigrant and her family and her ancestors lost everything more than once through war, communism, social upheaval. And her husband passed away a few years ago, and he was the risk taker in the family. And she was that grounding force. And it's not uncommon for couples and friendships, business partners, to form a strong and really healthy, helpful bond with a person of the opposite skill set that a risk taker and a grounded person can make a really good pair. They counterbalance each other. And optimally, in any kind of partnership, each of us calls the other to grow in their less developed areas. And so my client's in an interesting place in her life. Her family responsibilities are over. The kids are launched. They're doing well. The husband is passed. She's financially stable and doing a lot of personal growth work to move into this next phase of her life. She's healthy, creative, very smart. And we talked about her challenges with being in new, unpredictable situations. And she recalled that earlier in her life, she had been a risk taker, but that through the course of the long marriage, the husband kind of held that role, and she held down the fort. And risk-taking was like a muscle she hadn't used in a long time. But that didn't mean it didn't exist. Each of us is a unique and complicated blend of lots of different things. And this particular continuum of safety and risk, of predictability and novelty, most of us fall somewhere on a continuum of that in different areas of our life. And I would say it's very important to recognize, appreciate, and acknowledge the kind of innate or biological built-in way that we lean toward routine or novelty. And the call is to grow or lean into our less developed side. Safety, security people can be prone to rigidity and growing in the capacity to tolerate and even welcome new ideas, different experiences can really expand our life experience, make us more flexible, open, and receptive. On the flip side, risk takers and novelty chasers can have a penchant for drama and chaos. Commitment can be difficult for them. They might struggle with routine and developing healthy habits. I know that was me, drama queen and child of chaos that I was for much of my earlier life. And it was tremendously beneficial for me to partner with someone who was a cement block of dependability and routine. I learned a tremendous amount about the value of responsibility and comfort that came with having some solid structure under and around me. It still allowed me to take risks 
but didn't let me forget my parachute when I was jumping off the bridge. And although I'm not too big on putting people in boxes, I don't find it helpful to diagnose my clients most of the time. Systems like the Enneagram and the Zodiac are mildly interesting, but I haven't found them terribly helpful. I am a dyed-in-the-wool Aries, for sure. If I read the description, I fit it perfectly. And the same was true for whatever Enneagram number, I can't even remember what I am. But sometimes having a diagnosis or a box to put ourselves in can be very affirmative. When I determined I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, it explained a whole lot of things and gave me a system and a perspective which changed and healed me in ways I didn't even think were possible. Of course, just naming it didn't change it. I needed to do something about it. But once we named it, I knew what to do. For me personally, I needed to get sober. When my son was diagnosed with ADHD and autism, they don't use the term Asperger's anymore, which is kind of unfortunate because when I read the symptoms of Asperger's, I almost fell off my chair. That was my son. There was a name for this thing, his particular quirky self. And it normalized it, gave a reason. He wasn't broken. This is just the way that he is. And some of it probably isn't going to change. If you're a routine-oriented safety person, you might never have a desire to jump off that bridge. And that is completely okay. It's like the idea of introvert and extrovert. There's been a lot of really wonderful literature come out in the last few decades. The book Quiet by Susan Cain and The Highly Sensitive Person by Elaine Aaron, two of the most popular really a whole bank of literature coming out about the value of introversion in a culture that tends to overvalue the extrovert. As an extreme extrovert, I tend to partner with introverts. I have introversion within myself. I need a lot of time alone. I need a lot of time in quiet. It's very helpful for me to have a partner that understands that, doesn't need me to be turned on all the time. And there may be a correlation between extroversion and risk-taking and introversion and safety security, but not always. One could even see our political system, conservatives and liberals, very much along these lines. Those who value novelty and difference and those who value safety and structure. And although the news may play up the drama between those two camps, in our two political parties, the country's pretty much 50-50. And for all the challenges and complexity that America has, we live in a very stable place. In fact, it could be understood that healthy novelty stands on the shoulders of solid structure. They both are necessary. I know for myself, I like it that the garbage gets picked up every week, that my water runs when I turn it on. I have electricity running in my house, and there's a functioning hospital to go to if anything happens. And we look at countries where the political structure is unstable, and daily life can be quite difficult for ordinary people. I know for myself, these last few years have been a time of incredible growth in both directions for me. In order to write my book, to produce this podcast every week, and now creating daily content on Instagram, I've really had to grow in dependability, responsibility, and routine. At the same time, I've had a practice going way outside my comfort zone, learning all kinds of new tools, and continuing to grow and expand my skill set, my courage, and my creativity. I started doing Instagram Lives on a pretty regular basis, and video is a whole new world. So it's my own experience that like in a healthy coupleship where one partner offers stability and the other offers risk and novelty that benefit both of them, we can develop that within ourself as well. That as we grow in stability, security, and safety within ourself, our ability and capacity to learn new things and experiment can grow. And if you lean toward the adventurous and risk-taking, can be tremendously beneficial to counterbalance that with some safety and stability so you have a place to come home to if you crash and burn. I used to say my ex-husband was like the rock that I tied my kite to 
Without that rock, the kite would just like fly away. (laughs) But now I've become my own rock. And my kite is flying higher and stronger than it ever has. So if you're a kite, you might consider where you tie your string. And if you're a rock, you might value and appreciate the kites in your life and how you benefit each other. And as we become aware of our own kind of a natural leaning towards safety or novelty, being willing to lean into our growing edge to develop that counter skill set that may be underutilized or underdeveloped so that we can become more whole, empowered, and interdependent in our lives. Thank you so much for listening. I'm having so much fun on Instagram. Check out my page at Spiritual Psychology, spelled like the podcast. If you'd like to get a free download of the first chapters of my book, you can click the link in the show notes. I'm going to be doing an Instagram Live this Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, with Zaire Sagi, an energy healer from Spain. We do very similar work, but from different perspectives. If you're around on Tuesday, we'll be talking for about 15 minutes. Really lovely man who's trained deeply in Chinese medicine. If you'd like to find out how spiritual psychology might be helpful to you in your life or to learn more about my mentorship program, shoot me an email, info at reneemckenna.com. And I'd super appreciate if you take a moment and give me a good review if you're an iTunes listener. Helps move this up in the ratings. Makes it easier for people to find. Deep gratitude to my supporters on Patreon. And blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.